I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Hi, I'm an EMT and former firefighter from the Greenup County, Kentucky area. I've had two encounters in my lifetime with what I believe to be Sasquatch. I've told people that I've had the encounters, but I've never told of any of the details, mainly because I knew no one would believe me if I did. The second encounter, I really never saw the creature, but I know it was there. My first encounter was quite the opposite. I saw the creature up close for at least a few minutes. It was, in short, terrifying. My second encounter happened while I was ginseng hunting in late summer. It was right on the outskirts of Daniel Boone National Forest at the Rowan Lewis County Line in Kentucky, just a few hundred yards from Cranston Road. I'd been in this hauler making my way up the ridge, looking for roots, for about an hour or so, when I heard some brush moving about 50 to 75 yards up the hill from me. I strained hard to see what had made the noise, thinking it may be a deer or maybe even an elk or bear, but saw nothing. As I continued my zigzag pattern toward the top of the ridge, I heard the noise again. I looked again, and I saw a flash of black, and the brush moved slightly. My next thought was, bear, and not having a firearm with me, I decided it would be best to start back down the hill. As I did, I kept an eye on the area I had seen the movement, and to my horror, I realized it was following me down the hill, all along, making sure it stayed hidden. I could see glimpses of black and the brushes and branches move the whole time I was retreating. I know that there was a possibility it was a bear, but what made me so uneasy is the fact that the brush and branches this thing was disturbing were five to six feet off the ground. Knowing that black bears only stand around three feet high on all fours, and knowing that bears don't move far on two legs, much less several hundred yards, I really believe what was following me down that hill was a Bigfoot. My first encounter was in Lawrence County, Kentucky, when I was around eight years old. I know it was a long time ago, but I know what I saw, and I will never forget it as long as I live. We were staying with relatives in an isolated hauler between two hills with no other houses around. There were quite a few people there, and the little house didn't have adequate sleeping room, so we put sleeping bags on the floor in the rooms, and my cousins and I slept on the floor beside their parents' bed. I've always been the first person awake, no matter where I sleep, and this morning was no different. It was just breaking daylight, the windows in the bedroom were open because it was hot there in August. As I lay there wondering what to do that day, I saw a figure pass by outside the window next to the bed. My first thought was someone was up and had to run outside for whatever reason. But as soon as that thought was finished, the figure was looking in the open window by the dresser. Words cannot describe the horror I felt. I had never heard of Bigfoot at that time, so I was sure King Kong was standing outside, looking through the open window. I stayed frozen with fear, knowing if the beast saw me watching, it would attack. That was my thought anyway. The next thing I know, it reached its arm through the window and grabbed a piece of jewelry from the dresser. The noise it made caused one of the adults to switch positions in bed, and like a shot, it was gone. I told everyone what had happened, and they told me it had been around there for years and not to be afraid, because it had never harmed anyone or anything, and that it was more afraid of me than I was of it. I don't know about that, but I do know what I saw. After this incident, I started learning about Bigfoot, and was and still am convinced that the creature is real. Okay, let me start by saying I've always been fascinated by Bigfoot. I don't think it makes me biased because, until recently, I was always still skeptical but curious. In 2006, my then four-year-old daughter told me that she saw monkeys on the edge of my field as she was riding in my wife's car down our driveway. She said, there was a big one and a smaller one. They both had red eyes and the bigger one looked like it was waving. I asked her how big and she said the biggest one was a lot bigger than me. I'm six foot four and 200 pounds and it was real hairy. I dismissed it as a child's imagination, but always kept it in mind because the description matched stories I had heard as a teenager about a Bigfoot-type creature in Lawrenceburg known as Howdy because he waves. I've had to retell the story to friends and family over the years, and it stays consistent but never much detail. 
I was actually jealous. I thought, if she really did see something, why couldn't I have seen it too, so I could know for sure? But, as I stated before, I was always curious. I kept an extra eye out for a while, but never saw anything, and pretty much dismissed it. It was modern rifle season in November 2011. I was deer hunting by myself on the same property. It was getting close to dusk, and I was considering getting out of the deer stand soon when I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I turned to look and couldn't believe my eyes. From left to right, I watched two creatures, both larger than me and covered in long hair, running upright on two feet. There was no mistake these were Bigfoot. One was very dark brown, almost black, and the slightly smaller one was almost blonde, more like coyote-colored blonde. They were both jogging with arms relaxed and looking behind them. They ran within 25 yards right in front of me. I honestly can't give much detail about the faces. They were looking behind them a lot, plus I was simply shocked and not looking for detail. They covered ground quickly and were gone in less than 10 seconds. They disappeared into a clump of trees behind my pond. I pulled my scope up but could only make out something going through the woods once they passed. I waited until almost dark and got down to look for fur or prints. I couldn't find anything, but it was cold and dark, and I was shaking from the shock of seeing them and the cold combined. I returned the next morning and found no sign. In December of 2010, I think it was around the 15th, I was going deer hunting on private family property very close to Elkhorn City, Kentucky. This was my first time going hunting in a while, as I had given up the sport in my late teens, early 20s, and would have been 30 at the time of the sighting. The road that I had to travel is passable with a four-wheel drive and is an old mining and logging road. The terrain is typical Appalachian terrain and the spot that I was headed to, where my tree stand was located, is on a ridge top and somewhat flat from an old mining operation, but very steep on one side of the road and somewhat flat on the other. I was hunting with a muzzle loader gun and as I arrived at my parking spot in a steep curve in the road and on what we call point, a natural crossing for deer and other wildlife, I got out of the driver's side of my truck and walked behind my truck to get the passenger door open to get my gun and load it. I am not sure of the time, but it was well before daylight. As I attempted to load my gun, I heard what was coyotes making a lot of noise, which was not uncommon, but these were close, and I have to admit that I got spooked and hurried and got back in the driver's side of my truck, locked the doors, and flipped my headlights back on. My truck was facing the flat area with the point to my back and the steep hillside on my right. I cracked my window to listen for other sounds, and I heard more coyote sounds, and in about two or three minutes time, I heard what I knew had to be a large creature coming from a flat area where my truck was facing. Keep in mind, the coyote sounds were coming from the same direction. Next, I saw something that I have never seen before or since. I saw a creature that had to be at least eight feet tall. It came out of the wooded area toward the left side of my truck. The creature was moving at a quick speed, but when it came out of the clearing, it seemed to be shocked to see my truck and apprehensive. It stopped for maybe five to ten seconds and took off and disappeared behind me. The creature had the form of a really big man with long arms and longer hair that covered his body. It walked slumped over almost like it had a hunchback. My total time of seeing this creature was probably about 10 seconds. Since this occurrence, I have seen bear while hunting, and I can say for sure that what I saw that December morning was not a bear or anything else that I've ever seen in these hills and mountains. In a nutshell, the creature ran and walked like what you see in TV reenactments. I truly believe on that morning I saw a Sasquatch. I can't describe how I felt after seeing the creature. I wasn't scared, but I wasn't totally comfortable either. I suppose you can say I was bewildered. Just before my sighting, I had taken some friends to our property to do some coon hunting. These guys had good dogs, but when we tried to turn them loose, they would not go out of our sight, and all three dogs returned to us within ten minutes and would not hunt, which was unheard of with these particular dogs. This was probably around two months previous to my sighting. We also heard what sounded to be rocks rolling down the hill in front of us, which was very steep for no apparent reason. 
The witness felt that it was a he because it looked like a really big man. Gauging from some tree comparisons made later, the witness estimated the height to be between seven and a half to eight feet tall. The Sasquatch had reddish brown hair at the length of four inches all over its head and body. The hair pattern reminded the witness of someone in a ghillie suit, except it obviously was not someone in a suit. The forehead was sloped back and the mouth looked ape-like. He could see teeth, but he could tell that it must have had huge teeth from the way the mouth protruded and the skin was stretched tightly over the lower face. The face itself was sparsely covered with the same reddish-brown hair. As it passed him by with the window cracked, the witness could detect a slight musky odor, but not overpowering. As the Sasquatch moved past the rear of the truck, the witness rolled his window down, craned his neck to observe it move off over the hill. The coyotes continued barking before, during, and after the encounter. The year was 1978 when my family and I took a summer camping trip to the Natural Bridge State Park. The park is located deep in the Daniel Boone National Forest, about 52 miles southeast of Lexington and about two miles east of the town of Slade. I was only 10 years old at the time and I was totally oblivious to the word Bigfoot. We drove to the park from the city of Frankfurt. The passengers, in two separate cars, included my mother, stepdad, younger sister, aunt, uncle, and a family friend. We arrived at the park a couple hours before dusk and proceeded to secure a camping lot. After setting up the two tents we had brought, everyone became thirsty. Upon reaching for the drinks we'd brought along, my uncle discovered that one of the coolers was almost out of ice. It was the month of August, and the humidity was very high, so we needed the ice. I was the one chosen to get ice at the community lodge, about a half mile away from our campsite. It was just about dusk when I set out on the muddy road by myself to get the ice. I remember walking from a left to right direction. The road had a steep hill on the left-hand side and a small stream parallel its right side. It was lower than the road and resided in a ravine. About halfway to the lodge, the first thing I can remember was the awful smell. I had smelled dead animals before and figured that's what was causing the odor. I knew that whatever was responsible for the smell had to be very close because my eyes were beginning to tear up. It was at that time that I stopped dead in my tracks because right in front of me was the biggest footprint I'd ever seen. It was so big that there was only one of them directly in the center of the soft muddy road. It was a bare footprint, complete with the impression of five toes. Whoever made this footprint had come down from the steep slope on the left and had gone down the shallow embankment on the right and into the stream. I leaned over and began studying the print and its enormity. It was nearly as big as I was, or so it seemed at the time. That's when I remember having this alarming feeling that someone was watching me. I kept studying the print and trying to find a match print somewhere else, but I couldn't. I couldn't figure out how someone could only leave one footprint and why they weren't wearing shoes. Upon following the path this person must have taken, my eyes made contact with a dark figure from about 50 to 80 yards away from me on the other side of the stream. What I first thought was a tree suddenly moved. I honestly couldn't say how tall it was because it was standing in a ravine and some distance from me, not to mention that it was starting to get dark. Evidently, it had been standing there for the minute or so I studied the footprint and had been watching me. It only moved when it noticed me looking at it, and it very quickly disappeared into the tree line it was standing next to. My visual observation of this creature lasted about three seconds at most. All I can say is that it was covered with dark hair all over. It was kind of shiny, like greasy hair. At least it appeared that way in what light was left. It walked on two legs, and very well, I might add, it seemed very graceful. It had long arms that appeared to hang as far down as its knees, and they swung as it walked. As far as height, I can say that it was as tall as the few of the smaller trees it stood next to, but I don't know how tall they were either. While observing the creature, I don't remember feeling threatened in any way. It was only afterward, when I had time to think about the experience, that I felt afraid. After observing the creature disappear into the woods, 
I immediately turned back toward the campsite and ran all the way while yelling for my stepdad and uncle. They thought I had made the whole thing up, that I had concocted the story as an excuse for not wanting to get the ice. Laughing all the way, they offered to escort me to the lodge. Halfway there, they were silenced by the discovery of the footprint, but their silence was only short-lived. My uncle was the first to crack a joke. They sure do grow them big around these parts. They were forced to admit that it was an extremely large footprint. In fact, it easily doubled my stepdad's size ten and a half foot. Since it was now dark, we hurried along to the lodge and back to the campsite with our flashlights. My dad convinced me that I had seen a black bear. I had never seen a bear in person before, so I didn't know the difference at the time. I've now seen many black bears in the wild and at zoos, but I have yet to see a black bear walk as swiftly or as gracefully on two legs as the creature I saw that night in 1978. In fact, I have yet to see a black bear walk on two legs at all. I've seen them stand up, but not walk. The arms on the creature I saw were definitely longer than those of any bear. That very night, after we had all retired to our tents, we were all awakened by a thundering noise. It sounded like something heavy coming down the hillside toward our tent at a very high speed. My mother thought it must be a large rock or boulder rolling down the hillside. Anyway, whatever it was came between the two tents and made a huge splash in the stream across the way. The next morning, when we came out of our tents, one of the two picnic tables had been turned over, and more huge footprints were scattered around the camping area. After telling a person what I experienced the next day, he informed me that someone had reported seeing a large hairy creature the week before. They saw it while riding the skylift at the park. It was said to have been standing in the mouth of a cavern that can be seen from the skylift. This occurred November 7, 1995. Three friends and myself were camping out the night before the opening morning of deer season. We had set up camp in an area known as Lonesome Woods, which covered about three counties. It was really cold, and we had a really big fire going, and we were all sitting around it to stay warm, when all of a sudden, this weird moaning sound filled the woods. It sounded kind of like a siren, except it was very loud. It let off a series of three moans, starting low, building, and then dropping, pitch as well as volume, in three bursts. This scared us because we all grew up in this area and have hunted and camped out here all our lives and have never heard such a cry. Not wanting to act scared, we tried to laugh it off, but an uneasy feeling lingered throughout the camp for quite a while. That happened about 9 o'clock. About 10.30, T, one of my friends who was camping with us, stepped out into the woods to relieve himself. He wasn't gone for about 10 minutes when he came running back to camp saying, I'm gone, and if all of you have any sense, you'd leave too. We asked him what was wrong, and he told us he had seen something down by the creek located on the other side of the hill. It looked about eight feet tall and appeared to be drinking from the stream as he came across the hill. Once on top of the hill, it took notice of him, stood up, and watched him. Or as T said, watched me run. T hadn't much more than got the words out of his mouth when we heard something running through the brush on top of a hill. My brother had a mining light, plus it was very bright from the moonlight that night. The sky was spotless. Shined it up on the hill to see a silhouette of a very large creature running on top of the hill. We couldn't make out a color, but it was human-shaped with long arms and ran kind of hunched over. It looked to be about eight feet tall. The sound it produced while running was amazingly loud. It sounded as though a truck was being driven over a bunch of branches and twigs. This was enough for us. Scared us out of our wits. We packed up what little we had and left. We'd heard a lot of stories about this area, and now we believe them. There is something in those woods, without a doubt. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to enter the November giveaway contest. Just listen to the video linked on your screen and follow the instructions to enter. Thanks, and good luck.